is the 2005 Bennett Family Reserve Chardonnay um, from Russian River Valley. Um, it saw fermentation in oak. It saw age in oak, about eight months. It also sees surly, and the type of oak it sees is French. Um, the difference you'll find between American oak and French oak are American oak um, wines tend to have a lot, American oak in general tends to throw a lot more of an aggressive profile into the wine, so it's a lot more of that dilly kind of coconut. Um, whereas French oak tends to be a little more delicate and nuanced, so it tends to be more kind of cinnamon and clove. Um, it, and it has a lot to do with the forest that you grow with the oak in, as well as the coopers that are making the barrels. Um, American coopers have come a long ways in terms of the quality of coopages of American barrels. So the prices, you know, while the French are still more expensive, the American barrels have gotten a lot more expensive. Um, one of these barrels you see in the side room here, you know, can be anywhere from $900 to $1,600 a barrel. Um, as I said before, it only holds 25 cases of wine. If you're doing this style, um, which I'm going to guess that a lot of this oak is brand new, um, you're having to buy the barrels every year. So that's quite the expense if you kind of do the math in terms of what it costs per bottle. So let's taste it. Right away, the fruit jumps out of this glass, in my opinion, in comparison to that Chilean Erasmus. Um, it comes from a cooler climate relative to California, but as we kind of climbed up the scale here, um, this to me is a much more fleshier, um, unctuous kind of richer wine. It, it has more weight to the palate. It seems a bit chewier on the mouth. Um, I think that has something to do with the fruit profile to some degree, but I think it has a lot to do with its treatment in the oak. Um, while I talked about flavors of oak, um, what it does texturally to wine as well is it enriches wine. It brings everything to the surface and makes wines rounder. Um, these oak barrels are not airtight. And so what ends up happening is the wine oxidizes slightly. And as wines oxidize, they concentrate. And so you just end up with a fatter, richer wine. Now, going back to the raw resources, if you don't start with a good, high-quality sourcing of grapes, then the, wine, the oak will overwhelm the wine. And it'll taste like, you know, licking a two by four, which is not that enjoyable. I'm sure you've never done it, but um, it, <laughs> um, it, it just, that's all you taste. Whereas if it starts with good high quality fruit, it's a component of the entire profile. I think in this wine, I get definitely more obvious so. I can taste kind of the toast level in this wine. I think it's balanced. I definitely think there's good quality, dense, um, fruit to it that's handling the soap, but there's no doubt that this has the most oak in the lineup that we've tasted so far. Um, so, as an example of what a very obviously oaked wine would be in this flight, this is it, in my opinion. Um, I don't think it's over oaked. Again, I think it's handled it well, but this is the most obvious oak in the bunch. Um, who likes this wine? Good. Yeah. Um, I would say pick this wine over 99% of Chardonnays out there because what I find a lot of wineries will do to get this profile is, is apply kind of a cookie cutter formula of, you know, let's do 12 months of oak, brand new oak every year without any consideration of what Mother Nature brings you each year. And when you're a large winery like Kendall Jackson that's making 4 million cases, it's a lot harder to kind of bob and move every vintage. And you know when you're a smaller winery like the Bennett family guys, you can do that. And I think they've made the right assessment with this particular vintage in allowing um, the right amount of oak to handle the, the quality of fruit that they got this particular vintage. Okay. 